So last November, as I explained in the beginning, there were pres presidential elections in Bolivia. Morales claimed victory. The army said, no, it was rigged. Um, they forced him to stand down. Uh, Aaron is going to talk about how left-wing figures in, in this country said, look, this is a coup. He, he, was, he was democratically elected and the army have overthrown him. And many people... Uh, let's say with, with, with other shades of politics said Jeremy Corbyn's an idiot why is he defending someone who's just rigged an election talk us through it Aaron yeah so I'm sure you remember it it's from last year we'll get a tweet up from Jeremy Corbyn typically astute when it came to matters of foreign policy to see at Evo S Pueblo who along with a powerful movement has brought so much social progress which is inarguable in Bolivia forced from office by the military is appalling I the Bolivian people and stand with them for democracy, social justice, and independence on the hashtag El Mundo con Evo, the world with Evo, Evo Morales being the president of Bolivia. 15,500 retweets. Uh, and then you can you can sort of laugh and look at people in the comments being abusive to him. Uh, what's interesting is that that was very much at odds with what you see from, for instance, The Guardian's diplomatic editor, Patrick Wintour, uh, who had his own take on it saying, whatever his record as president, and he's retweeting Jeremy Corbyn saying this, ballot stuffing is wrong. So this take on Bolivia by the Labour leader is truly startling. The Organization of American States, more on them in a second, found a, quote, heap of observed irregularities in the October 20th election and said a new vote should be held. Uh, then adding to that, the observer view on Evo Morales and Bolivia, uh, and it talks about how Morales didn't deserve to rule any longer and that there was some legitimacy to him being overthrown. Now, unlike The Guardian, unlike The Observer, The Washington Post does original journalism. They went to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and they have determined in a study that actually there was no electoral fraud in the October presidential election, casting doubt on the prior findings, as I've said, issued by the Organization of American States. They found that Evo Morales did indeed win in the first round of voting. Uh, and they've thrown out the OAS accusation that Morales' government manipulated the results. So we're not talking Navarra Media, Squawk Box, the Canary. This is Washington Post and MIT. You don't get more legitimate, authoritative liberal institutions in the world, right, <laughs> saying that actually Morales won and he was subject to an undemocratic coup. And it's just interesting to see that, you know, Politicians can make wrong calls. Jeremy Corbyn's called some things wrong before. Uh, but the instinct of certain people within the sort of centrist pundit, punditocracy to attack him and lambast him and say, you're wrong, oh my God, you're always on the wrong side, really illustrates the complete vacuity that they have when it comes not just to principles, uh, but to uh, political literacy in regards to foreign affairs. Corbyn on this issue, as so often elsewhere, has been proven correct. The likes of David Aronovich, The Guardian, the Observer, and many, many more of these people who perceive themselves to be on the left, I would argue on foreign policy or anything, but have found to be on the wrong side. Did you show the, the tweet from um, Dominic Raab, our I current didn't. foreign well, secretary? No, you know Dominic Raab's going to talk shit, but the take for me was more the left yeah, no, but I feel, establishment I feel media like being that, terrible, but no, I think that, you that should. Is true, you but should. Also, also I've the fact that you've got him. the current foreign secretary. So he has quote tweeted the Jeremy Corbyn tweet that you read out and said... Unbelievable. The Organization of American States refused to certify the Bolivian election because of systemic flaws. The people are protesting and striking on an unprecedented scale, but Jeremy Corbyn puts Marxist solidarity ahead of democracy. It turns out Jeremy Corbyn was just backing uh, a leader who had just won a free and fair election to become president. And what Dominic coming, not Dominic Raab, sorry, was doing was during a general election, even though he is the foreign secretary, that's his job. You know, he's the kind of guy who should actually, you know, be, be a bit more careful about saying that an, an election is, is, is illegitimate. Uh, he used it as a cheap shot against the, the leader of the opposition and he's been proved wholly wrong. And I await an apology from Dominic Raab. I doubt it's going to come. It. Yeah, the ideology at the heart of it is sickening. You know, I mean, one of the, documentaries I grew up with was watching War on Democracy by John Pilger about the kind of systematic manipulation of democratic processes in South America by what America, the United States regarded as its backyard. Um, you know, it was a kind of neo-colonial approach to running South America. Um, you know, most notably Salvador Allende's coup against him. 
um, and interesting connections that have emerged with you know the Rolls Royce workers in Scotland, for example, and, and efforts to sort of express solidarity with that um, back in the 1970s. But I think the key thing for me was even looking at um, Mark Weiss brought wrote a really good Twitter thread on this and he's written extensively about this Bolivian election where he's making the point that the process itself was flawed and people jumped on the initial results because it was a quick count phase which um, was I, I, ideally meant to give the population confidence that the, the votes were being counted and it was an, a real-time process because in Bolivia and some South American countries it takes several days for the mm. eventual results to emerge um, but that actually caused real confusion in this election because there was a big rural urban divide and the way the votes were counted so that um, actually the support that Morales was getting was actually lagging because he wasn't get he was getting the rural vote and it took longer to bring in and that's where the the organisation of American states then came in and said oh, it wasn't wasn't possible for him to make that jump and mm. the final third of the votes counted uh, and that's where they started to throw all these kind of um, shades of doubt onto the the contest and that's where eventually the whole thing fell apart so it's interesting that the very gold standard processes that were insisted on by the OAS have actually ended up undermining the confidence mm. in the election. And it was Morales that agreed to the, the rerun um, and still uh, the, the army stepped in and, and you, you know, it wasn't like he was resisting another electoral test, but the army nonetheless stepped in and, and removed him. I think that's in anyone's definition a coup d'etat. Chris Jenkin asks, and this is a difficult question, I'm not sure if any of us are going to know the answer to this. Do you think there's any chance of Bolivia returning to socialist government now that it's been proven the last election was legitimate? I would hope in a free and fair election that clearly the popular vote was supporting left, left-wing left candidates, so hopefully that would be the case. But it's difficult to tell how it would play out. The problem with, or or why you know the army have an advantage in these kind of situations is because once you've done a coup, people are going to be very resistant to undoing it, aren't they? Mm. And if you think, oh, well, maybe there'll be international pressure, there's never going to be international pressure to reinstate a leftist government, right? So, so, so it's, it's the kind of thing where if this had been done by the left, yeah, the United States would be there, you know, at the Security Council saying, you've got to redo this, you've got to redo yeah. this. But if it's ever Morales who lost out, lost out you know, a leftist who's, who's resistant to their imperial power in, in, in that continent, then, I mean, right. I, I'm not an expert on Bolivian also, politics, but my guess would be, you know, they're not, they're not going to, right that wrong. Uh -huh.